Okay, so we have our client in sideline, and what we're trying to address is, oh, the symptom would be related to low back dysfunction. So the muscles in question that we'll be, we'll, we'll be targeting are the obliques, deeper to those, uh, transverse abdominis. Uh, the more famous one that people usually have, might uh, associate this positioning with is quadratus lumborum. Um, but interestingly enough, the attachment site, if we visualize a seam that runs superficial, very deep on the lateral side of the body, all the way down to the spine, even so as um, interfaces with that. Then if we go more posterior, we have all the erector spinae, spinae of the lumbar spine and integrated with all the, of course, the lumbar dorsal fascia, which interfaces with glutes and lats. All that being said, working on this whole lateral lumbar area from slightly anterior to lateral to posterior, we're going to accomplish a lot. And it's usually a better position because we can get good leverage onto these tissues and find those um, more intense trigger pointy spots for our clients. So it's a case where what you're seeing me do is I have a step stool. These I always suggest you find somewhere, some way, a nice broad one. Not that it isn't too high up, that just gives you at least a good six inches of elevation. That way you can just be higher up and get your compression more directly down on the lateral side of the body. So, okay. So my forearm, if I'm drawing a line, I have to make sure the client's more or less square. She's pretty good. I have a square bolster underneath this leg that's gonna help stabilize the pelvis. So now I'm gonna go work directly over the sheet. That's why it's convenient to uh, work on this area because I don't necessarily need to drape it either. So my forearm, um, my orientation should be that my compression is slightly directed inferior. So towards the pelvis, toward the feet. If my arm and my uh, force is focused more upward toward the head, I may inadvertently get into the ribs and I don't wanna do that. So. If I'm on their left side, if it's their left side, I'm going to use my left arm down towards their feet. If it's the right side, I'm going to use my right arm down towards their feet. So coming directly lateral, maybe a touch anterior to the client's tolerance level. This can be very sensitive. So always to the tolerance level, make sure you don't just put all your pressure in at once. As soon as you make contact, engage the client and say, okay, you tell me when the pressure is just perfect and there should never feel like there's too much strain on the lower ribs, okay? okay. Good, so good, pressure's already there. Now we have options related to some easy starting muscle and energy techniques. The first option would be just rolling the pelvis. So she, although it might be hard for you to see, is just rolling her hips, the whole pelvis around, and I would want her to find a position of ease where it feels the most comfortable. So you just find a position and hold yourself there where it is the most comfortable for you. That'll be our position of ease. She's gonna hold herself there, just take a few breaths. We could hold this for 10 seconds to even up to a minute. I usually do more somewhere between 10 to 20 seconds. And then I'm going to have you just move out of that small rotation, slow. The slower, the better. Yep. And then get back to the position that's most comfortable for you. And a few breaths. That's a very simplified version of positional release, right? Uh, apply compression, usually to a sensitive area to the point of tolerance, and then have the client move their body into a position where it's most comfortable, and then hold themselves in that position and take a few breaths, and then move out of that position. Okay, 
good. Now I'm stepping off the stool and now I'm gonna be working more posterior. So I'm thinking usually directly on, if not anterior to that lateral refet. That is the lateral refet is the name of the connective tissue site where all of those structures um, intersect and articulate. So here I'm gonna go more on the posterior side of it. Okay. Yeah, okay. And now I could have her do the hip motion as well. Another option here is yeah. in the muscle, all that's important here is the muscle activation. So the motion, the size of the motion doesn't matter. We're just looking for where I'm pushing to kick on, to concentrically shorten. She's just gonna start to lift her bottom leg up off the table by activating the opposing leg adductors. I'm going to activate the muscles of the lateral <laughs> spine on her There's left side. Right, right there. So right side adductors activate left side lumbar muscles, okay? And good, and relax. Now I can keep working more and more posterior. Just make sure you don't slip or get yourself in an awkward position with your body mechanics. You don't want to be standing like this. Step further away from the table if you have to. And make sure they're stable. I sometimes just hold their upper traps. That gives me an awareness of where their body is. It also, thankfully, gives me a, a handle so that I have a little counter pressure. And then I'm getting a little you know, shoulder work done. So it feels good. If anything, maybe it's a distraction. These low back muscles, and for my client here, this is a problem area that's quite hypersensitive. So now slowly compress pressure. Good. Okay. Now we're going to intersect and use both methods now. I have my compression. I'm going to have her roll her hips into a position, really the pelvis, rolling the pelvis into a position that is most comfortable and holding herself there. Take a few breaths. Very good. Using breath is an important um, component here because these muscles all interface with the abdominal wall. So the client can play with even exaggerating the breath. The bigger the inhale, the bigger the exhale, the better. Very good. Then now she's going to fully relax if you're not already at the pelvis. There you go. Nice and easy. Now let's do the lift of that bottom leg. Yep, hold it. And then back down, nice and easy. If I have anything to always suggest when I have clients do active joint movement, I tell them to do it as slow as possible. Slow and controlled movements are the safest and the most effective. Very good. So this is just an important method to consider. Not paying so much attention to working in the low back in prone and saving some time to work on it in sideline is this more beneficial? It's better to leverage in body mechanics for myself as the therapist, and it can be a much more effective way to work on this area. And thinking less about specifically quadratus lumborum, that's part of this complex, but the clients can have symptoms manifest in any one of these structures, including the obliques, all the way over to the lumbar erector spinae. So, good option. Thank you.